Dear friends, a very warm welcome back to Knowledge Park. Have you ever wondered what truly happens inside? From that first spark of desire to the final breathtaking wave of release? This is the secret symphony of your body. Let's listen. It begins not between your legs, but between your ears. A glance. A whisper. A thought. Your brain, the master conductor, sends the first signal. Dopamine and norepinephrine flood your system. Desire, focus, that delicious ache of anticipation. Signals travel down your spinal cord, lighting up every pathway. Your body tunes to a frequency of pleasure. Blood, your body's sacred river, rushes to the core, engorging the clitoris, pulsing with potential. Your vagina glistens, creating its own natural silk. This is vasocongestion, the beautiful swelling proof of your arousal. The overture has begun. To truly understand female pleasure, we first need to explore its anatomy. For a long time, conversations about female sexual response centered almost exclusively on the vagina. But the real epicenter of pleasure is the clitoris, an organ dedicated entirely to this sensation. When we look at the pelvic anatomy, we can see how intricate this system is. The clitoris is far more than what is visible externally. It's a complex and extensive network. Understanding its full structure is the first step in demystifying the different paths to orgasm and appreciating the incredible design of the female body. Let's take a closer look at this amazing organ. The small, sensitive nub you can see and touch externally is called the glans clitoris. This is just the tip of a much larger structure, similar to the tip of an iceberg. The glans is packed with thousands of nerve endings, more than any other part of the human body, making it incredibly sensitive to touch. But beneath the surface, the clitoris extends deep into the body. It has a shaft and two legs, known as the crura, that wrap around the urethra and vagina. This internal structure is substantial, forming an elegant wishbone shape that is fundamental to sexual response and pleasure. This internal anatomy explains why different types of stimulation can lead to orgasm. Because the internal legs of the clitoris hug the vaginal canal, pressure on the front wall of the vagina, often associated with the G-spot, directly stimulates this internal network. The G-spot isn't a separate magical button, but rather an area where the internal clitoris can be accessed and stimulated through the vaginal wall. This means that both direct external stimulation of the glands and indirect internal stimulation via the vagina can activate the same pleasure network. So, whether pleasure comes from stimulating the external clitoral glands or the internal G area, it all leads back to the same place, the clitoral network. There isn't one right way to achieve orgasm. Instead, there are multiple access points to a single powerful system. Recognizing this helps us understand that all these experiences are valid and interconnected. It's about discovering what feels best for you, knowing that every path ultimately stimulates this incredible organ of pleasure. As touch becomes more intentional, more rhythmic, the symphony builds. Your heart hammers a primal drum beat. Your breath quickens. Deep inside, the skinny's glands, your internal wellspring, begin to fill with a clear, potent fluid, a mixture of enzymes and love. This is when you feel it, a deep, building pressure, a fullness. The sensation is so intense your mind might try to label it, even fear it. This is the crossroads, the moment of choice. Energy swirls and pools within the pelvis, gathering like a golden tide drawing you inward. This is your invitation to surrender. Breathe into that pressure and let your muscles grow soft and welcoming, not tight with fear. Tell yourself, this is not urine, this is pleasure. I am safe, I let go. And then, the levy breaks. Your brain unleashes a tsunami of oxytocin and endorphins, pure, liquid bliss. This surge commands your pelvic floor to dance in waves, not once, but a sequence of rhythmic, involuntary pulses, a powerful, pleasurable seizure of ecstasy. This is your orgasm. Simultaneously for some, the fluid building in the skinny's glands is propelled outward, riding those contractions. A warm, gushing release in liquid harmony with orgasm's percussion. This is ejaculation.
the physical proof of total, utter surrender. Here's the crucial part. Orgasm and ejaculation are related yet separate. Many people orgasm without ejaculating. Some ejaculate without a strong orgasm. And some experience both. All of these are normal. Orgasm is the peak of pleasure, rhythmic pelvic floor, uterine, and vaginal contractions with a neurochemical surge. Female ejaculation is fluid released from the urethra during or just before a strong orgasm. Its composition includes PSA, prostatic acid phosphatase, enzymes, glucose, and water, distinct from urine. Source, the ski knees glands, often called the female prostate, beside the urethra. Pathway, glands to ducts to urethra, propelled by contractions. Lubrication is vaginal and vestibular moisture. Ejaculation is a urethral release. Different origins, textures, and timing. Key point, from ski knees glands, not the bladder. Amounts vary, from a few drops to a gush, related but separate, and many patterns are normal. Different paths, one pleasure network, explore what feels good. Step one, pre-play, align together, share boundaries, curiosities, a safe word, choose warmth, dim light, softness that tells the nervous system, you're safe. Inside the brain, safety lowers cortisol while dopamine and norepinephrine rise. The parasympathetic system opens the door to arousal. Muscles loosen, breath deepens. Step two, sensory foreplay, slow eye contact, scent, gentle breath on skin, unhurried kisses, tactile signals climb the spinal cord, activating limbic reward circuits. Oxytocin begins to climb, heart rate and temperature rise, skin vessels dilate, sensitivity blooms. Step three, external touch, stroke thighs, hips, lower belly, then the vulva, linger on the mons, labia, and clitoral hood. Stay rhythmic, add warm, generous lube. Vasocongestion increases blood flow to the clitoral network, glands, body, crura, vestibular bulbs swell, labia plump, and Bartholin glands add slippery lubrication along the vestibule. Step four, clitoral focus, circle around the hood, build pressure and tempo gradually, pause to let sensation integrate, communicate, softer, slower, firmer, a beta and C fiber inputs modulate pleasure, dopamine reward loops intensify focus, pelvic floor begins gentle anticipatory contractions, breath naturally lengthens. Step five, internal access, optional. With consent and lube, insert two fingers palm up, curl toward the front vaginal wall, the G area, using steady, wave-like strokes. Here, touch stimulates the urethral sponge and internal legs of the clitoris, crura. Pressure engages reflex arcs that can amplify arousal and urge to pee sensations, common and normal. Step six, managing the urge, soften jaw, exhale and allow the pelvis to drop reassure the mind this is arousal i am safe the sensation comes from swelling of the urethral sponge and filling of the skinny's glands this is not urine composition includes psa and enzymes distinct from bladder urine step seven plateau keep the rhythm constant partners mirror breath add vocalization maintain pressure where it's best external internal or both Adrenaline, dopamine, and oxytocin surge together. The sympathetic system begins to rise. Pelvic floor organizes into a pre-orgasmic pattern. Step 8. Orgasm. Ride the breath over the edge. Let involuntary waves take over. Orgasm triggers rhythmic contractions of the pelvic floor. About 0.8 second intervals, uterus, and vaginal walls. The brain releases endorphins and oxytocin. Bliss, bonding, and release. Step 9. Ejaculation. For some, with peak contractions, fluid from skinny's glands travels via ducts into the urethra and out. During climax, pudendal and pelvic nerves fire in bursts, coordinating rhythmic squeezes of the bulbospongiosis and pelvic floor about every 0.8 seconds. Breathe low and let waves lead. These pulses massage the urethral sponge and skinny's ducts, moving fluid toward the urethra. Volume varies with arousal time, hydration, and gland size, normal across a wide range. To build a sexier peak,
Keep touch steady at 68 out of 10 pressure, match strokes to breath, and ride three breaths past the first urge to stop, then release. It may mist, spurt, or gush. Volume varies widely. Ejaculation, urethral, release from skinny's glands, lubrication, vaginal to vestibular moisture, different sources, textures, and timing, both normal. Step 10, afterglow and care, slow cuddling, water, gentle cleanup, and a trip to pee to reduce UTI risk. Share what felt amazing. Note tomorrow's body sensations. Every couple tunes their own tempo. External focus, internal focus, or both. Different paths, one pleasure network. Safety, breath, rhythm, and communication are the keys. To welcome this experience, you must first build a temple of trust and sensation. Start solo. Map sensations with two fingers, keep steady rhythm, breathe, and note what works. Consent and communication come first. Agree on boundaries, check in often, and choose a safe word if desired. Dim the lights. Feel the sheets against your skin. This is about pleasure, not performance. Create a space where you feel safe, beautiful, and utterly desired. Encourage deep, rhythmic, confident touch focused on steady, building pressure and consistent tempo. Explore what feels good, keep the rhythm like a rising tide, and breathe steadily together. Finding the G area, insert two fingers, palm up, curl toward the front wall with steady, rhythmic pressure. Aim four to six centimeters in. Adjust angle and tempo. Feel for spongy, ridged tissue. Keep breathing. Soften your shoulders and jaw. Over tight pelvic floors can block release. Practice down training. Belly breath. Lengthen on exhales. Relax your pelvic floor. If pain or burning persists, see a pelvic health clinician. Tip. Pelvic floor balance. Inhale and let the belly expand. Allow the pelvic floor to drop like a flower opening. Exhale and gently gather, no squeezing glutes or abs. Practice five slow breaths daily. Kegels done right. Small lift, hold three seconds, then release four to five seconds and fully relax. Rest five seconds. Do five to eight reps, two to three sets weekly. If you feel tightness or pain, skip and focus on relaxation work. Build support, not gripping. Two sets of 10 glute bridges. Slow supported deep squat holds. Gentle hip openers. These boost blood flow and stability for better arousal and comfort. Core coordination. Pelvic tilts and dead bug pattern. Two sets of six each side. Keep jaw and shoulders soft. Balanced core and relaxed floor. Make pleasure easier than chasing tightness. Preparation helps. Empty your bladder before play. Lay a dark towel and take bathroom breaks without shame. The sensation of needing to pee is common. During the peak, exhale, relax the pelvic floor, and gently bear down to allow fluid to release. Drink water. The clearer your inner rivers, the more freely your body can express its pleasure. Place a dark towel beneath you. Let it be a permission slip that tells your mind, it's okay, let go. There is no mess here, only evidence of passion. When the peak approaches, don't hold your breath. Moan, sigh, or cry out. Let your breath carry you over the edge. Your voice is a powerful catalyst for release. Use generous lube. Water-based for toys and condoms. Silicone for water play. Avoid oils with latex. More glide equals more pleasure. Try positions that angle toward the front wall. Pillows under hips. Deep squat. Or on top controlling angle. Keep belly soft. Breathe low and slow. Aftercare matters. Pee after play to reduce UTI risk. Hydrate, clean toys and hands, and cuddle or breathe together to land softly. See how this comes together? Let's make a pleasure power smoothie. Watermelon for blood flow, spinach for magnesium, flax seeds for hormones, and berries for antioxidants. Multiple orgasms are common for some, rare for others. Refractory periods vary widely, minutes to none. There's no benchmark. Follow your body. Incorporate these foods and exercises consistently for a few weeks. This isn't a quick fix. It's a foundation for vibrant health and powerful pleasure. Listen to your body, explore what feels good, and empower yourself from the inside out.
Expect cycle shifts. Many feel higher arousal mid-cycle with rising estrogen. Others prefer luteal comfort. Track your patterns. Adjust touch and pace. Your capacity for pleasure is deeply connected to your overall well-being. Nourish it, move it, and celebrate it. As the last wave subsides, a profound peace descends. Oxytocin wraps you and your partner in a blanket of connection and trust. This is the afterglow, the quiet echo of the symphony you created together. If you feel pain, burning, or persistent leakage unrelated to arousal, pause and consult a pelvic health clinician. When to see a doctor, start with an OBGYN or gynecologist for pelvic pain, bleeding, painful penetration, cycle concerns, or suspected infections. They examine, test, treat, and refer when needed. See a urologist or urogynecologist for leakage, frequent urination, urethral pain, recurrent UTIs, or suspected Skene's gland issues. They assess bladder, urethra, and pelvic support. See a pelvic floor physical therapist for tightness, burning with insertion, difficulty relaxing, postpartum changes, or pelvic floor discoordination. They teach down training and coordination. See a certified sex therapist or psychologist for anxiety, fear, trauma history, desire mismatch, or communication issues. They provide evidence-based counseling and strategies. Consider an endocrinologist for thyroid, prolactin, or hormone concerns. Dermatology for vulvar skin issues. Urgent, severe pelvic pain, fever, foul discharge, or heavy bleeding. Seek urgent care. Your body is the instrument. Pleasure is the song. A conversation with your body. Create your symphony.